An important part of being a model rocketeer or an aerospace engineer is safety. Whether we are building rockets to fly 50 feet in the air or all the way to the moon, the National Association of Rocketry has produced a model rocket safety code that contains rules that every model rocketeer should follow to have safe, fun flights. Most of them are common sense, like not tampering with motors and keeping people clear of the launch pad. However, safety in model rocketry isn't just important on launch day. It begins with design. It begins with stability. A safe rocket flight is one where the rocket flies vertically. Most model rocket contests, like the Team America Rocketry Challenge, include an altitude component, so that's another reason to keep rockets flying up. The model rocket safety code dictates that the rocket must be launched within 30 degrees of the vertical, but stability is what keeps a rocket flying straight up as it gets buffeted by wind and turbulence. If a rocket is unstable, it will perform a maneuver we call tumbling, in which it flips uncontrollably and unpredictably. This is unsafe for one thing, and it will also prevent the rocket from achieving its potential maximum altitude. As a rule of thumb, a rocket should be heavy at the top and have its fins at the bottom to be stable. This rule of thumb is good enough for building rockets for fun, and it indicates that egg lofting rockets should be extremely stable, as an egg has much more mass than any other single component of the rocket. However, it may be desirable to measure and control a rocket's stability more precisely. Let's see how aerospace engineers do it. Imagine we have a rocket, and we pin it somewhere along its body. When air flows over it, the flow exerts pressure forces on every patch of its surface. Depending on where we pin the rocket, it may be spun one way or the other. However, if we pin it at exactly the right point, it won't spin at all because the forces balance. That point is called the center of pressure, or CP. It's a bit like the center of gravity, or CG, in that it is a balance point, but it depends on forces from air pressure as opposed to gravity. This also means that its position depends on the direction of airflow, but it stays mostly in the same place for simple rockets which are thin and symmetrical. Balancing a rocket to find its CG is straightforward. Finding the CP experimentally is less so without a wind tunnel. Fortunately, we have model rocket design and simulation programs that can find it for us, such as RockSim, OpenRocket, and SpaceCAD. For quick sketching, or for making designs when these programs aren't available, we can assume that the CP will be about one body tube's width in front of the leading edge of the fins. Much as gravity forces pull the CG down, pressure forces act to pull the CP along the direction of airflow. Because a body in free space will rotate about its center of gravity, if the CP starts out behind the CG, the pressure forces will push the rocket back into line if it gets tilted slightly. On the other hand, if the CP is in front of the CG, the aerodynamic forces will try to flip the rocket over to fly tail first, while its thrust pushes it nose first, which causes instability and tumbling. This is where the rule of thumb comes from. Putting weight in the nose moves the CG forward, while putting fins at the tail moves the CP backwards. The separation between the CG and CP, the static margin, should be at least as long as the diameter of the rocket to ensure that the rocket is stable. A rocket whose static margin is equal to its diameter is said to have one caliber stability. Why then do we not put lots of weight in the nose of a rocket and huge fins at the tail? First, there are practical limits to both approaches. Increasing weight limits the rocket's maximum altitude for obvious reasons, and large fins increase the drag that the rocket experiences, which also hampers its flight. Large fins are also prone to damage by landing and mishandling. Another limit is the concept of dynamic stability. Everything I have explained until now is called static stability. If we froze a rocket at a snapshot of time, would it tend to turn back to vertical or not? Of course, rockets don't fly in steps and snapshots. They have momentum, and it takes time for them to change. A rocket with lots of mass concentrated in a single point has low dynamic stability because it will spin very easily. Think about how easy it is to swing a hammer by its head. A rocket with low dynamic stability will spend lots of time swaying back and forth, which means it doesn't fly up as high as it could, and can actually flip over completely if it gets hit by an unlucky gust. Egg lofting rockets are especially prone to having low dynamic stability because their egg or eggs concentrate lots of mass in one place. A TARC team adding mass to its rocket to decrease its maximum altitude should consider adding mass someplace other than the nose. There's probably plenty of room in the booster section or altimeter bay, for example. Larger fins can counteract this to some extent, as they cause friction with the air and slow down the rocket's pitching, but this has the same practical limits I mentioned earlier. The last reason to keep our rocket's static margins under control is to reduce weathercocking. Weathercocking is a phenomenon where a rocket turns into the wind as it flies. This prevents the rocket from flying as high as it could, and because the rocket is flying into the wind when it is at maximum altitude, the parachute feels much more stress when it opens. 
a good rule of thumb is to limit the static margin to no more than two calibers. We can also limit weathercocking by only launching on calm days, or in calm moments of windy days, so that there is less wind to influence the rocket's flight. Unfortunately, we don't always have the luxury of controlling every aspect of our rocket's designs or launch conditions, so sometimes we just have to launch on windy days, especially if a deadline is approaching. In such circumstances, bear in mind that rockets are most likely to weathercock at the moment they lead the launch pad, because they have only had a little time to build up speed. Longer launch rods give rockets more time to accelerate, and motors with more thrust accelerate rockets faster. Both of these techniques help a rocket to be flying faster when it leaves the launch rod, so the wind will affect it less. So, now we know enough that we don't have to rely on the rule of thumb and hope our rocket turns out to be stable. With our knowledge of the center of pressure, the static margin, and dynamic stability concerns, and with model rocket simulation software that can help us compute these things, we can keep our rockets flying high and safely.